Hello, my name is Victor Aranda. First of all, I would like to thank you, the organizers, for giving us the opportunity to present this joint work in this conference, TYPES 2022. Today, I would like to talk to you about um, description operators in LEPAS partial propositional logic, which is a version of Hankins propositional type theory. And the main question that I would like to address in this conference, in this talk, is to discuss whether it is possible to prove Hankins nomability theorem for this formal system. Uh, so let us start by briefly explain to you what is uh, this propositional type theory proposed by Kankin. The idea is that this is just a type theory where the only basic type is the set of truth values and the more complex types are just the, a set of total functions from D A to D B where A and B are arbitrary uh, types. This type theory was already described by, presented by Lesminski and um, exposed in a paper by Gregorczyk. Um, Henkin arrived to this system independently, independently of this uh, work of Lesminski. And the, what is more important of this logic is that the completeness proof lies in the fact that it is possible to have a name in the object language for every element of the hierarchy of types. And yeah, so the idea is basically that now um, our research, we are trying to uh, consider um, hierarchy in which DAB is not the set of total part of total functions from DA to DB, but the set of possibly partial functions. Okay. And Taking into account that um, partial functions are those for which some arguments are undefined, the way to represent these functions in our hierarchy is to include a new truth value, a truth value for undefinedness, which could be done in several ways. For instance, um, we can consider that the set of truth values include a new truth value, we will denote it by phi, and hence consider that the set uh, DAB is the set of total functions from DA to DB, where uh, you know the basic type is not a three valued uh, set of truth values. And then by this way, now we have functions, functions G, for instance, of type TT, where the uh, value of the of one the, under g is one and the value of zero under g is undefined so we have incorporated partial functions to our hierarchy uh in this way we would say that uh, a fee is treated as a first class value um because phi is the value for partial function when it is applied to something outside of its domain uh farmer is is the one who who speak about this uh, this uh, indifferent value as a first class uh, value uh, in this perspective, this approach to to undefined values, and um, well, it is true that this hierarchy has been already studied in different papers from Lepage and Lapierre, so we would like to study more carefully whether it is possible to, to prove the nameability theorem in this system, which has been, as I said, um, already studied. So um, the plan for today is just, uh, first of all, presenting to you the uh, Lepage partial propositional logic. Um, then we will focus on the problem of description operator, which is the first step towards the proof of a nameability theorem. And then, we will show how we think that it is impossible to prove that the, the, the nameability theorem holds for this um, for this logic. Uh, so yeah, concerning the hierarchy of types, we have to say that uh, in this hierarchy of types of Lepage, 
the following partial order is imposed to the set of truth values, as you can see in the slide. Um, the undefined element is the bottom element, and this is a reflexive um, relation. And uh, true and truth and falsity are not uh, comparable to each other. And this is basically what you can see in that picture, how it is represented. Then uh, for higher levels of hierarchy, uh, they impose that for any F and A, a D in the A, B, F is below D if and only if for every X in the A, F, X is below the X. And um, the condition that it is also required that functions of the hierarchy must be monotonic with respect to the partial order that we have already defined. Um, in consequence, the um, set of functions, for instance, e of the level DTT does not contain 27 possibly partial functions, but only 11, that is only which are monotonic with respect to the partial order. Here you can consider uh, how it looks like the, the hierarchy of DTT, this, this domain of the hierarchy. Um, you, can, you can observe that this is a semi-lattice semi which has a bottom element with this function nine, and this is how the partial order is depicted in a, in a single picture. Uh, so just before, taken into consideration whether it is possible to, to prove the inamiability theorem, let us uh, introduce some key definitions to understand how things work here. First of all, uh, it's important to, to highlight the definition of incompatibility between objects of a given type. For type T, um, um, what the objects which are in which, which, which are incompatible are uh, just true and false. Okay, and uh, for for type, for any arbitrary type A, B, two functions are incompatible if there exists some X in their domain, such that the image of on their, of, of this argument on their, these functions are uh, un incompatible. Uh, we also consider the definition of total object, which is also very, very important for the bias uh, logic. The idea is that for every type, uh, they inductively define the set of total objects of um, in, in, in a domain. The total objects are for type T, only truth and falsity, and um, the undefined binary is considered to be a non-total object. And for any uh, arbitrary type AB, the total objects of AB are uh, those functions such that for every object of the domain, which is a total object, then the image must be also a, a total object. And finally, it is also important to establish the idea of uh, equivalence relation between objects, objects in a given, given, given domain. And uh, the equivalent relation is defined as follows for type T. Um, two objects belong to the same equivalent relation if these objects are equal. And for an arbitrary A, B, and F, G belong, that belongs to, to the total objects of the A, B, to, these two functions uh, belong to the same equivalence class if the, the image, their, their image belongs to the same equivalence class just to make it more, uh, you know, to, to see it more directly, you can check this image. In the green box, there are the non-total objects, and in the red box, the remaining objects are total objects of DDD, and you can check that uh, all these four functions in the um, yellow box are the incompatible functions to each other, and these uh, functions in the right, both in the right and the left side, are um, in the same equivalence class classes. Um, yeah, uh, one prime prime and one prime are in the same equivalence class, and four prime prime and four prime are in the same equivalence class. Uh, moving to the syntax and semantics of this logic, uh, we have to say that the syntax of this system of Lepage uh, partial propositional logic 
is that of Hankins, a step by the symbol, but this symbol, uh, which is introduced in the past uh, hierarchy. And now considering an assignment and an interpretation, we have to say that identity, that identity is defined in a different manner. Uh, in particular, um, uh, identity of two elements is considered to be equal to one. No, no, if they are equal, but if they are both total objects and they belong to the same equivalence class, uh, it, it is false if they are not compatible, if they are incompatible, and it is uh, indefined otherwise. For instance, if A, A, A and um, beta A bill, um, bill are um, non-total objects, the value will be the undefined element. Um, although this is not so very relevant for our talk, uh, you have to say that um, the value of this predicate, unary predicate, which is applied to any formula of an arbitrary type is one, if it, the, uh, the, the meaning, the, the notation of this uh, expression is a total object and will be undefined otherwise. Uh, it, all, it is also important to say that the Boolean connectives found in the domain are cleans, uh, clean is uh, Boolean connectives. Uh, so this is uh, very different from Hankins original type theory, where the connectives, are for, uh, the connectives we, we can found are of course classical ones, the classical ones. Right? So um, consider the proof system and, and completeness, uh, Lepage already gave a sound uh, proof system for his partial propositional logic. And um, in 1995, he said, he explic explicitly said that the problem is to give a, a complete system for the class of, of, bay of valid statements. And uh, the problem at the, at the moment was that. Uh, it was impossible to have a canonical name in the object language for every partial function without modifying, he said, the, the, the theoretical framework in an essential way. And we we asked why, what, why this happens, why it is not possible to, to give a canonical name in the object language, why uh, Lepage uh, already said in 1995 that it was not possible to prove the nameability theorem of this logic. Uh, so to prove the nameability theorem, as I already said, the first step is to establish a description operators of the logic. So we will uh, first show how to define these description operators, and then we will see why it is not possible to follow Hankin's strategy to prove the nameability theorem. So first of all, just saying that uh, a description operator is a close expression of the appropriate type in that case, an arbitrary in, the, in that case, an arbitrary type S, whose interpretation is an election function such that um, um, you know the um, that belongs to this uh, domain. You can you can see in the in the in the slide. And to this, to, to give a neat treatment of the description operators, we should first define what it, it is called a fixed object of an arbitrary type S. So we inductively define the, fi the, the fixed object of, of, of a domain as follows. For type T, um, AT, it will be the falsity. And for type AB, uh, a of type AB will be the function um, such that for every X of the domain, the image will be the uh, fixed object of type B. So then Hankins defined the, um, the argument, the, the, sorry, the, um, the election function as follows, the uh, value of any function of type S, um, under T will be the unique X in the domain such that the application of this argument to F is one, or uh, it would be the fixed 
object of A, if there exists no X in the domain of the real more than one, such that Fx is equal to one. Uh, but the question is, uh, it is this election function monotonic? Because, you know, we have to make sure that the functions uh, belong to the hierarchy. And according to the requirements, we have imposed our hierarchy. These functions, of any functions belong to the hierarchy, if and only if it is monotonic with, this, with respect to the parcel of there. And we can easily see here that uh, this way of describing the, of, of defining the election function will be not monotonic. Uh, here in red, you can see easily uh, why. So we should uh, look for a new definition for, for this uh, election function. And uh, the first idea to, to do that is uh, introducing a new uh, fixed element, in this case, a least defined element in such a way that for every type S, we inductively define the least defined element, US of, of, of the S. And for type T, the less defined element is just phi. And for type AB, U, the U, U of AB is the function of the AB, so that for every X in the domain DA, the value of this function will be the least defined element of type B. So uh, now we can define finally these, uh, these uh, election function in as follows, right? Uh, if F is a total object, we will say that the function is defined exactly as Hankin's uh, function, that is, uh, it will be the value will be the unique x in the domain such so that fx is equal to one. And uh, the fixed element as, if there is no x in the s of either or more than one, such so that fx is equal to one. And uh, if f is not an total object, we will see that uh, the um, value of f under this election function will be the undefined element of type uh, as the least defined element of type S, which is the bottom element of the lattice of uh, the appropriate uh, domain of the hierarchy, right? And we can easily see that here, in that case, the election function is indeed monotonic. Uh, boom. For type TT, we have here the visual proof of this fact. And in general, it can be proved that this function is, uh, as I said, indeed monotonic. So now we would like to, I would like to uh, explain why it is not possible to follow Henke's strategy to prove the nameability theorem for this logic. And first of all, we have to suppose for the sake of the argument that the description operator has been already defined and has the properties that you can uh, check in the slide that is that the, interpre the interpretation of the, uh, of, of of a form of expression uh, which has the description operator and uh, lambda a, a function abstraction, it is just the equal or equivalent to um, the election function, right? Uh, when applied to the interpretation of the lambda abstraction. So um, now let this formula, you can see the be the abbreviation uh, of the, the abbreviation of uh, of this one, and then also consider two more conditions. First, uh, that f and x are elements of d t t t such that f is the function with constant value one prime prime, and h is the function with constant value one prime. And also let phi n be a name for phi considering that phi n is a meaningful expression of type t. The question is, hence, what is the name of f in the object language, right? This is what we have, we want to prove and we want to establish. Um, so we try, we try to follow Hagen's strategy just to prove it, uh, to prove it uh, in a, just like more directly, right? And, this is how Hankins defined uh, name of an arbitrary 
formula in this case of type T T T. Uh, uh, here we have you, you you see that we have three possibilities that X could be. So yeah, you have the three uh, members of the dejection, and then we will let uh, G of X T be one. So the acidment of the acidment of uh, the variable X T in this first in this uh, um, assumption in, in this case it will be one. So yeah, assuming that. Um, it is clear that uh, the second member of the disjunction will be always false, and that the third member of the disjunction will be either uh, undefined or false. So uh, the truth of the disjunction following this um, uh, this description operator depends on the first member of the conjunction, and uh, since F's, F and H, as we already defined them, um, belong to the same equivalence class. It is uh, immediate to check that the truth value of the of this first member of the disjunction is will be true if um, the assignment of the variable set at T is F, or if it is uh, H. So this uh, formula could be true in two different uh, circumstances, in two, two different cases may, may, may make this formula true. And in consequence, the interpretation of the formula, which has uh, the description operator preceding it, will be uh, the undefined value. Okay, because there are two possibilities that make true this formula mainly the cases when set at ET is H and the case when set at ET is G. Therefore, FN cannot be a name of F because in that case, FN, uh, the, the value of FN when, uh, when it is applied, uh, the, the value, sorry, the value of one when it is applied to FN would be the undefined value and we, we were trying to prove that the, the value is a one prime prime. So the conclusion is that Fn cannot be a name of F. And the reason of this failure is that for Lepage identity, two elements in the same equivalence class are equal. But classical identity cannot be found in the hierarchy. So this seems to be some kind of fundamental failure of this, of this approach that uh, there are mainly two options left. We can just try to, to modify this Henkin strategy to, to look for another formula that makes that works for the name of, of a function of, of an arbitrary type. Or uh, it may be the solution just to change the framework and to look for another way of describing and dealing with uh, partial functions in um, partial functions in, uh, in, in propositional type theory. So just uh, let, to, to, to finish, now that since we're, you know, as, as the time is now very, is very limited, uh, just to, to, to finish, not, not to uh, speak uh, for so much, so much time, uh, I would like to, to say that we have showed that the hanging strategy cannot be strictly formally adopted to prove an amenability theorem for Lepage partial propositional logic. Uh, and uh, our conclusion is that uh, maybe with other ways of dealing with uh, the undefined value in type theory, this theorem can be indeed proof. So we would like to explore a partial propositional type theory in which the undefined value is no longer an element of the hierarchy. So it is uh, outside the hierarchy in the sense that we have only two elements in the set of truth values, the only basic type. The, the only basic type, sorry. And uh, then we have partial functions, uh, which are naturally considered as partial functions, not, not, and not as total function, total functions with uh, an extra argument, which is the undefined value. So this is this could be for future work. And uh, this is all for this, for this talk. Thank you very much for watching.